start it, please stand for a prayer. Uh, by your hands, if you so desire, uh, with Pastor Steve with Lifeline Connect Church and the Pledge of Allegiance. Lord, we uh, thank you uh, for the opportunity that we come, and Lord, I pray for our, our, uh, I pray for our village, our leaders, our, our police department, our fire and rescue. And Lord, I pray that you keep them safe. Lord, give our leaders wisdom and guidance to move forward. And Lord, I pray that we look towards you for answers, for guidance, and for wisdom. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank everyone for being here tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll start roll call now. Here. Bailey. Here. Beverly. Here. Eggley. Here. Martin. Here. Miller. Here. I know uh, we have, I believe Jeff Beverly's here, but we're going to hold off on you, Jeff, until we get down to some um, our committee reports. Thank you. Um, approval of our council meeting minutes back on June 3rd. I have uh, in the administrator's report, <clears throat> it states that uh, it says Corey Wan had no report. Next sentence is. He was asked about golf carts using the cement pad to park. He has ordered new signs. Somebody reads that in 20 years from now, they're going to go, well, what are they talking about? You know what I mean? All about the baseball area. Yeah, because it doesn't say we're in the park. It just says. In the park, yeah. yeah. It doesn't say in the park. It says yeah. the cement pad to park. Yeah. To park in. So you can correct that if you want to or leave it like it is. Well, what I had asked was if that people were still driving golf carts on the concrete, and they're not supposed to. But right. he wants to say verify but, what but, location. But apartment. when you read just twenty years from now, where's this at? Where are we? Where are we talking oh, about? I see. Okay. No big deal. Just okay. I went back on notes before, and then I was trying to understand where they're at. Yeah, we'll hold it. I'm making much to approve with that correction. I will second that. Roll call. Martin? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Miller? Yes. Essex? Yes. Edwin? Yes. Thank you. Um, you have approval of bills list in your packets. Any questions on the bills? Uh, the fireworks, is that for day in the park? Yes. Okay. June 29th. June 29th. The uh, Trust Fund Engineering for DuPont Avenue? <coughs> yes. What a, what are we doing? The people we spend a lot of money down there, and we get to turn a turn a spade to dirt. Yeah, we owe Choice One's contract is from 2020. <coughs> uh, balance I look at it today is 73,297. Uh, that's what our balance as of today is. Contract was originally 111,600. So is uh, could we go to work tomorrow? No. No, no. I mean, we don't have the funds to do it yet. No, no but I mean, if we did, are yes. they far enough along? We paid oh, yes. them enough money to yes. go to work. I mean, yeah. If, if the funds were sitting there to do it, yeah, we could start turning dirt tomorrow. Okay. Um, one other thing. I guess I'll direct this towards uh, police chief. We paid uh, three hundred dollars towards March radios. We still don't have a system, do we? Just for the fire department. Why you're not on the same deal with the fire department? Well, they probably did something with marks. They have marks, but I don't know what they would pay three hundred dollars oh, for. You see them. Unless it was a battery or. Do you know there? They just got paid. Those are just made to the treasure. Some guy, uh, the guys came out. Uh, Bruce was kind of leading that up, but some guys came out a while ago for uh, the tower thing and have some system over here. The last update I knew, I wasn't sure as far as um, the system, you know, Bruce will have more information because he made that up more than what I did as far as yeah, that. So, so what it is, I'd say it's, uh, it's the radios, the, the state gives us so many, so much, so many radios, mm -hmm. and then we have to pay for additional radios through the state. And this is that's this is working. additional radios. You're right. It's not anything to do with the frequencies or no. scanners. It has or nothing, nothing to do like with that. that. It has everything. It has 
It's all on the radio since South. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. Ron, I will say it was last Wednesday there was a looking that came in to run fiber to that Marks Tower. No kidding. So that was the day they were supposed to be there to walk do a walk or something. Yeah, but they, so they did call in the locate. And nobody they showed, did. right? Yeah, the locate was I don't know, I went down there. But uh wise equipment that uh, from here you talked earlier, Corey, that must be for that lift. Yeah, we have two lifts. This is the sixty footer and will be billed the next round of bills, uh, next meeting you'll see the one for the eighty footer. How uh is that a month? That's for a week. Oh, I was going to say that's for cheap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all I have. Uh, unless anybody else has anything, let's pay the bills. I'll second that. Roll call. That's it. Yes. Eggley. Yes. Miller. <clears throat> Martin. Yes. Bailey. Yes. Everling. Yes. We have boards and commissions that met. Uh, you have a Hicks TV board um, minutes in your packet, along with, I believe, uh, the logo contest winners. For the TV station. Mm -hmm. Well, here, not the Chris is here. He works a lot with the television station. Thank you for all you do for the station, there, Chris. We appreciate that. So. No problem. Okay. Questions on that. No questions on that. We can move along to council committee reports. Um, have first one of the a finance committee. I gave some verbal minutes last meeting uh, since we had the meeting preceding the council meeting, but these were the typed up minutes. So if anybody has any questions, that would be a good opportunity to ask. Sure. Uh, are you getting these papers? No, we yeah, we haven't gotten that. Oh, wait for budget. Okay. It was basically a presentation by okay. us. All right. I'm going to put the ordinance committee meeting last. Uh, Streetlight property sidewalk committee meeting. Matt, we'll the minutes in your packet. Put on this. Um, this is the the Bard property out there, uh, the RFP. Um, Rachel, since you were new, kind of to the council and solicitor's job, um, we got with Erica, Mark Warnicky. Um, they sent a packet in of what another what another village did for a piece of property, it's like that thick, uh, pretty in depth look at it. So uh, we would definitely need some guidance if we go in a certain direction with that property. And I know Erica would work with us. Mark would work with us. Uh, maybe something you can learn in the process of uh, your type of job here within the village. So um, I know the committee met, you know, they were kind of looking at different things. So we'll keep working on that. Police Fire EMS committee met. Um, we got the minutes in here is this packet. Um, some highlights. First of all, the, uh, it was a lengthy meeting. However, it ended at 5.45, not 6.35. We were here not quite that long, so um, I did note that in mind. That was my error. Um, since the hospital has closed a month ago, the EMS has seen a dramatic, dramatic increase in call volume. It's something that we really need to address. Um, so they sat down and came to us. Not only is their volume up, but also as expected, their run time is up now as well. So it's averaging, it went from uh, about 33 minutes before were the numbers to um, right around 90 minutes of run time. So with that happening, um, we also kind of found some deficits within um, the staffing and had discovered that weekends really needed to be addressed as well. So Bruce came in and talked to the committee about um, some things he'd like to see happen. Um, this isn't going to be an overnight fix. There's a lot of things in order for our community to have EMS that we're gonna have to address. Um, he is asking for us to be able to staff 48 hours per week. Um, and what he's looking for is not necessarily to hire one person, but the opportunity to hire as many people as that'll take to cover that 48 hours. Knowing that uh, we can't 
be extending past that 48 hours. So really, if that takes one person or eight people, he's asking for that ability to do that. Um, some of the other things that came up in the meeting was uh, 511. We were you know, told a couple weeks ago about the oil leak. They looked into it. The parts are going to be around $800. They are on order. And they're looking at between 25 and 30 hours to fix it. So it's going to be anywhere between $4,800 and $5,000 to fix it. Um, we're kind of hoping, and as a committee, I, I think that what we wanted is to go ahead and move forward th with that. Um, and, and the decision behind that was really based on the fact that if we decide not to keep it, we need to sell it. So it needs to be functioning in order to be sold. So, um, you know, Cheryl kind of had a number in her head. This was under that threshold, so she felt like it was most appropriate to go ahead and move forward with fixing it and then deciding um, what we want to do. So that's definitely something that's going to be brought back up um, to full council. Um, I'm kind of hoping, you know, I, we talked with Bruce about addressing some of the staffing shortage issues first and then moving forward with um, figuring out what we want to do with, with an ambulance. Um, one of the other things that was brought up was our billing. Um, you'll see here that we've been able to bill $9,500, $95,000, sorry, thank you, $95,000 since um, January to May, but none of that has actually come in, and I'm, were you able to get anything? And I will bring that up. Perfect, I'm not gonna spoil the surprise, <coughs> he'll inform us later. So um, he was gonna look into um, the reason why. Also, just in the first two weeks of June, we brought, he had, um, was able to bill $16,000. So I mean, it, it's gone up. Um, obviously with the runs. Um, so those are kind of the highlights. Um, the committee is in support of filling the weekend staffing issues. Um, so I don't know if that's, I need to bring that to a full council vote. But mm -hmm. So are you looking, because there's two different things here, 48 hours per weekend or 48 hours per week? So the weekend, all Saturday the Sunday weekend is where the deficit is, right? Weekend. We, the weekend yeah. is where the deficit so, is. <clears throat> so right now we have full coverage from 8 a.m. until midnight, okay? And then we usually have one person that will, that covers like two or three days, um, whatever she can. Um, and then you know, maybe Bob or, or Larry or you know somebody else will pick up that other, you know, uh, from like midnight to eight. Um, the biggest issue that I'm, that we're seeing right now is, is on weekends where, where, you know, everybody that's full time is off doing something else um, or might be busy. And, and again, I'm not throwing shade at anybody, but let's say, you know, if Derek's working, he's, he's unavailable, you know, and Drew, Drew just did uh, uh, 12, 24 hours over this past weekend. Um, so he gave us what he could, and, and uh, Rebecca, she gave us a lot of hours, but that was volunteer hours, because she, you know, she's been running part-time with us. Um, yes, sir? If we, if we vote right now uh, to give you the authority to get whatever it takes for you to cover that 48, you'll be you'll be in good shape for a little bit. Yeah, and, and like I like I was telling the committee, um, <clears throat> I'm going. I, I, what I want to do is I want to I want to be able to hire enough people to cover, um, and I will absolutely keep you guys abreast of of what is transpiring. You know, because the last thing I want to do is is have you guys say yeah okay and then we have a problem we have a situation where if there was a call and we saw another ambulance here in town what's that mm -hmm. about you know so should we vote now can we vote now mayor i think so yeah somebody wants to make a motion on that Tony, we'll, we'll be up financially i mean mm -hmm. we'll be up financially with it's going to be between 46 and 52 thousand a year to cover those hours we were um we get better reimbursement if it's a paramedic, and I'm assuming that paramedic is probably the higher amount there. Um, that's kind of what we'd like to give them the liberty to be able to staff based on that reimbursement. Because currently we only have one paramedic on staff. And mm -hmm. one advanced, right? Can, one we get, advanced and one paramedic. Does yes. the advanced, do we get higher reimbursement for them? Uh, we, we will, but not as high as, as you would, you know. And, and I, just a, as a, 
as a thought. If somebody has a cardiac arrest and I give the meds, that's a $1,500 run, okay? Um, if nobody's there, that at most, if Drew, you know, can't give them, can't give any meds, that at most will probably be just a thousand dollar run. So you are talking about an extra five hundred dollars. And I think it's worth noting that this is really a band aid on a situation. Mm -hmm. um, because of our run times, we have to think serious about having a second vehicle up and running, which means a whole nother set of staff not just two here and there. Um, so that's something we have to keep in the back of our mind as well. But this 48 hour staff is just, I'm assuming two people. Well, so right. we're just, Boom. we don't want it, we don't want to put a number on it. It's just the amount of staff it takes to cover that. So if someone can give us oh. eight hours in a weekend, it, you know, maybe that'll take well, two I mean, people. even if you had a backup squad, I mean, are you looking like at four? Or? Well, we really, we don't know because depending on the individuals, depends. if they have a full time if, job, if she if can do two hours and he can do two hours and she can as do long as 48 hours. Is going. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And but, I move, we. But keep in mind, it takes two of or them yeah. to run it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's it's a challenge for sure. And it still is going to require our staff. And I know that, you know, you guys, I, I see you guys in the back. I know you guys have stepped up a lot and have picked up those extra shifts and, you know, they're tired and then we're out and we need to get them home. There's time to, we have all different scenarios. Yeah. We have situations that we're, we're running differently than we have in the past. That's just exactly. life right now. So it is a learning curve a little bit with, with numbers, with the squad issues. Um, and we I, definitely need to come. And, and, and when I, and you know, during, during my time, I will kind of, I, I want to bring something else up that I mean it's it kind of ties in all together with with this with the, this, the second squad at least so all right well thank you for the committee to look into that and thank you for the staff to, to discuss that with the committee so I'll leave it up to you guys if you guys want to make a motion you can make a motion I did I'll second roll call well no hold on just a second we got more we report here I have numbers to look at. Can they afford to do this? 46 to 52. Where's the money coming from? It has well, we have the money to do it. So where's it coming from? I feel like every meeting we're having the same thing. Uh, let's eat. Do we have money to do it? Um, yeah, it's ruining my plans. My, <laughs> my plans for, we have the two mil levy and we have the new five mil levy. Right. We were going to use the five mil levy for our budget and because of the fact that they had zero money, they were totally in the hole for the last two years, we're going to let the two mill kind of like ride as their cushion, build it back up, but now we have to spend some of it. Okay. We talked about this and we talked about the levy actually. I mean, building up their account and you know, making concessions for possibly new employees and equipment and stuff, but we're in a situation right now. Well, and here, I'll be the Scrooge. I'm not against doing it. I'm saying a month they need something else and they don't have the money, what we got to do? I always say no. I always well, say no, no, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm not opposed to, to do it then. But can we afford to do it? Well, uh, if we have to start cutting budgets else, elsewhere to keep, uh, to keep the people in this town safe. I guess that's what we got to do. Uh, well, I, said, I said last time when we were talking about the pool the splash pad, I said the, the, the money from general fund can support the fire EMS. And it, the general fund money can be used for that. Even though Cheryl hates that, it can be used for that. Yep. And that's why we said that was more important. It was a need, not the pool was a want. And I'm 70 with a bad heart. Let's get this thing rolling. <laughs> I'll pick it up there. <laughs> so, I don't know. So, People will remember if you do have to make some cuts somewhere else that you don't forget. It's on the record. There's been other stuff on the record. That people forget about. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. No, you're fine. You're allowed to say. And appreciate your input. Does anybody else have any comments before we vote? Sure. Roll call. Bailey? Yeah. Eggley? Yes. Madison? Yes. Beverly? Yes, ma'am. Martin? Yes. Miller? Yes. Okay. Thank you. 
Um, thank you everybody for your discussion on that. Um, next we have the Ordinance Committee. Minutes are in your packet. <clears throat> so at the request of the mayor, we met last week to discuss the current um, marijuana legislation in the village as it pertains to medicinal and to start talking about recreational. Um, not knowing a whole lot about the topic, I invited Mr. Beverly to come speak uh, to us. Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did have lively conversation and Jeff Beverly was able to answer a lot of the questions that, uh, that the committee had. Um, although we felt with the sensitive nature of the topic, we felt it would be best if Mr. Beverly came and spoke to full council, so I invited him to come tonight. So yep. he'll gladly come up there and talk whenever you're ready. Does anybody have any questions about the that is in your packet? Okay. Uh, Jeffrey Beverly? Uh, is it Jeffrey or Jeff? Yeah. Jeff is good. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it, Council. Uh, my name is Jeff Beverly, and I'm no relation to Ron. <laughs> um, I grew up in Mark Center, and I now live here in Hicksville. My father, Bill Beverly, worked at Hicksville Bank for a number of years, and my grandfather, Daryl Jones, was very active in the community and the county, serving as county commissioner for over 25 years, was a Hicksville Rotarian for decades, and also a member of the former, or the board of the former building of Ron. So, We've got deep ties to the community. Um, this community is very important to me, and I'd like to help bring some industry experience and knowledge to the council as you consider potential marijuana businesses in the village. Uh, my professional background is I'm an attorney with an estate, estate planning background, and um, after a couple family health issues, my wife and I really reevaluated what was important to us. And in 2010, we left the real world and moved to California, and I got involved in the medical marijuana industry. I started a couple businesses out there. Um, we've lived in California, Colorado, and Florida, working on both the marijuana and the hemp side of the industries, also working with ancillary businesses like grow supply stores and smoke shops. So I've seen a lot of regulatory attempts. I've seen what prohibition looks like. I've seen good regulation. I've seen poor regulation. And again, my role here simply is to answer any questions that the council or the citizens may have about this topic. Um, so hopefully, move forward with, with some sort of resolution for, for, the, uh, for the village. Uh, my current role is I'm a business owner that manufactures hemp-derived cannabinoids. Uh, we produce products like gummies and drinks. Um, and in full disclosure, should the council decide to allow marijuana businesses within the village, I would consider applying for a license with the state. So in full transparency on additional motives here. Um, as as uh, Mr. Bailey alluded to, there's currently a 2019 ordinance in the village that prohibits medical marijuana dispensaries, but it, or businesses rather, uh, but it is silent on adult use marijuana businesses. Uh, having said that, there are stores here in town that sell cannabinoids. They are hemp derived, not marijuana, but they are being sold in the village. Um, they are legal under the 2018 Federal Farm Bill, uh, which allows hemp products to be sold as long as they are under 0.3% THC. Um, residents of the village can currently purchase those products at the smoke shop here or at some of the gas stations. They can purchase marijuana from the illicit market, which is untested and unregulated, or they can go to Michigan and buy regulated products. Those are the three options right now if, if residents want to partake. Um, for the village to consider this, the potential market size, within about 35 to 40 minutes of Hicksville, there are about 600,000 people, 200,000 in Ohio, 400,000 in Indiana. Uh, there's only one dispensary in Defiance County located in Sherwood. And the next closest dispensaries are all over an hour, or about an hour from here, located in Delphus, Bowling Green, and Lima. Given the underserved or unserved population in Indiana, Fort Wayne specifically, towns like Hicksville, Antwerp, uh, Payne, Convoy, and Van Wert have a big opportunity. Uh, whichever of these villages allow dispensaries will benefit greatly from increased traffic of businesses and increased tax revenue to help pay for some of the other things that are of need to the village. 
And with hemp and marijuana derived cannabinoids now legal in Ohio, the question really becomes, do we want that tax money and additional business to come to this village, or do we want it to go to other villages? And I, I don't say that flippantly. Um, I say that in, in all honesty. Maybe the village does not want that tax revenue or those people coming here, and that's a perfectly fine decision. But I'm here to really just to answer any questions that you might have about the industry in general. So what would like typical tax revenue be that would go directly to a municipality such as Hicksville? Okay. Uh, the Ohio tax regime is yet to be sorted out what's going to go where. The voters approved one, uh, one distribution schedule. The legislature is looking at a completely different distribution schedule. So it remains to be seen what the actual numbers will be. Um, I believe Mr. Bailey had some information regarding the numbers that do come back to the municipalities that participate. If you do not participate, those tax revenues do not get shared. Uh, but when you think about what kind of revenue could be driven to the village, looking at the population base, call it 600,000 people that would potentially shop here. Um, I think virtually every survey says anywhere from 10 to 20% of people consume cannabis products on a monthly basis. So your potential market is anywhere from 60 to 120,000 people. And it's a matter of how much you could capture. Being conservative and saying maybe 10% of that of that potential market, that's six to 12,000 potential customers on a monthly basis. And I would say the average ticket at a dispensary for the purchase is anywhere from 100 to $200. So you're looking at anywhere from half a million to north of a million dollars in revenue on a monthly basis. Taxes on that are, I think 15% is what was approved. And then there's a percentage of 20% of the 15, 30% of the 15, so four and a half percent total would come back to the municipality. So if you're talking about a million dollars a month, conservatively, you're looking at $45,000, $50,000 in tax revenue coming back to the, to the village on a monthly basis. But that's assuming it's medical and adult use slash recreational sales, correct? Um, it, it could be either, I mean, whichever was allowed. If there is a, a dispensary allowed here in town and it's medical, the uh, residents of, of Indiana would likely not be able to partake. They would have to have a, an Ohio-issued medical gotcha. marijuana card, which typically okay. requires a residency. Gotcha. Um, I don't think Ohio um, allows any reciprocity with other states. So That was um, not a question uh, about yeah. Indiana residents or any residents from any state purchasing in the state of Ohio. Usually cross the line. I legal, thought they right? weren't allowed to cross the lines with it. They are not technically allowed to cross the lines with it. Okay. I actually went to a mayor seminar uh, last Wednesday in Columbus. Uh, there was probably 70 mayors there, and out of the whole agenda, this was last on the agenda was the cannabis um, adult retail sales. They had two experts um, that own companies throughout the country. Uh, there are currently like 124 dispensaries in Ohio right now. That's going to ramp up to 300 on the first phase of licensing. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Listen. Those are very it was close. kind of a it was a great seminar, but the last topic, of course, was this, and everybody all the mayors started asking you know a hundred questions. So yeah. um, a lot of information was passed out. Um, the, the licensing it's real Ohio, to, from my understanding, even they said is one of the most restrictive states so far, and there's still some legislation out there that Ohio can still change through the the state house. Mm -hmm. um, there's still some levels of what they're going to do. It's not 100 percent done the state of what they're going to allow and how they're going to allow it but with what they currently have on the books um, they have to be 500 feet from any church um, daycare library um, those kind of facilities and they have to be a mile apart so um, there's heavy restrictions the the site that they put these in have to be for professionally developed they can't have the flashing lights they can't have a they can't even market on anything. They're allowed to do billboards, from my understanding, to market their company. So they can't have signs all over your communities, your county. Um, the sites they were showing, I'm just saying this is what they had presented at this meeting, where it looked like a normal storefront with a sign, um, no flashing lights, no you know, different things to highlight the company. It looked like a normal business kind of thing. Uh, the interior was well done. That's the company that was represented at the, at the facility. So 
Um, Ohio, they said, is one of the res most restricted states with how they can set up the dispensaries. Mm -hmm. The licensing usually goes through the cultivators first. They get the first chance. Uh, the cur current businesses that are developing the product, they get the first round of licensing and it opens up even more. But they said around the first phase, there's 300 more coming out of 124 currently operated. I, I think those numbers are, are slightly high for the first phase. They're gonna issue, I think, 50, or there are 50 and 40 licenses being issued in the first phase, and those will be, I believe, 50 for cultivation, 40 for retailer, could be vice versa. Um, that application period opened up here in June. In September, they're opening up another application period for existing businesses that are not retail dispensaries that they can become a dispensary. So this first phase is simply um, existing, so like the Sherwood dispensary can apply for dual use, is what they're calling it. Right. Um, and if they are granted, then they'll be able to sell both medical and recreational at that facility. Um, then finally, after those two phases, there will be a third phase, which allows unlicensed businesses entering the, the, uh, the industry anew to be able to apply. Aside from the financial aspect are you aware of like any other statistics related to like crimes mm -hmm. or culture or, I mean what's out there about that yeah um, that's a great question there are mixed reports um, and with COVID intervening in this a lot of the numbers can be skewed because behaviors were changed people staying in consuming different patterns so I hesitate to make broad-based statements on it the most recent information that came out of Colorado, and, and that's where I lived most recently and, and, and was in the industry most recently, so I, I stay up on that, uh, because Colorado has some of the most liberal laws in allowing these businesses to operate. Um, teenage usage is down consistently since legalization. Uh, it is less than the national averages, which was a surprise to everyone. The expectation was that it would go up in usage. Um, crime rates generally are up, violent crime is down. So is that a function of uh, population increases in Colorado and just moving in lockstep or is there a causal effect? I, I, I don't believe it's a causal effect, but I'm, I, I can't opine either way. I think that's just my, my, my stance on it. Um, again, multiple reports that can show positives or negatives toward it. A lot of what you see on the negative side will be relative to traffic accidents or fatalities that have cannabis related to it. Unlike alcohol, which exits the system within a number of hours, marijuana can stay in your system for 30 plus days. So having the presence of marijuana in your system does not mean that there was necessarily any intoxication or uh, uh, lessened capacity to drive. Um, it just means that you consumed within the last month. So some of the numbers that show increased traffic accidents and fatalities involving marijuana, it does not mean it's a causal relationship. It simply means that that person was tested for it. Also, there's a lot more testing for cannabis after accidents currently than there have been historically. So you will see those incidents rise. Again, I'm not here to say that this is a, uh, a cure-all and that this is going to be um, all roses and, and rainbows for the community, there certainly are aspects that are negative to it. Um, I think what really needs to be considered is what are the negatives of prohibition versus allowing and regulating, knowing where the operators are, knowing that the products are tested and regulated versus not knowing who is selling what to whom and what ages, and also a dispensary only sells cannabis products, your local street dealer will sell all manner of other drugs. So those are the real, uh, and looking at public health and safety aspects of it, I think it's really important to look at what are the, the aspects of prohibition as well as allowing. We else have any questions? I mean, this is a topic that's gonna to be keeping ramped up here in the next couple of months, maybe a year, kind of thing with everything going on. So everybody, I'll open it up to the Sure, um, just backing up a little, I would say uh, we can create an ordinance that says we can't, we're not going to sell cannabis or marijuana in the village of Dixville. That's a real possibility. 
Oh, yeah. Currently on the books, we have one prohibiting medical marijuana. Yeah, that was passed in 2019. And we can create another ordinance that bans recreational marijuana. Is that true or not? I'm asking. It's true. Yeah, true. Uh, uh, I would be in favor of that. You and I are on opposite stance, and that's fine, right? Yeah. Totally fine. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, we got you. Uh, I think uh, I believe that you can uh, uh, talk to many law enforcement agencies and we'll find out that marijuana is still a gateway drug. I know that's a term that's been around forever, but I surely I, I believe that you talk to law enforcement, uh, that's what they're going to tell you. If our sole <coughs> reasoning for this is the money, I think we do have to take a good hard look at the results of Indiana coming in here for recreational marijuana. We've been down that road here in the village of Hicksville with the alcohol and 18 and 21 thing here back in the day. I, I, to me, that's an obvious thing uh, that's going to happen. If our sole, one of our big um, reasons to do that is that, well, some other town is going to do it. Well, I, I don't think that's poor reasoning. Either it's good for our village or it's not. And we do have to look at the moral aspects of it. We do have to look at the possibilities of another legalized, mind-altering, I'm going to call it a drug. You might disagree. Um, this young man uh, is here very much in the cannabis industry. Uh, I'm far from an expert on the other side of it. I would love to have somebody come in here and talk about what's happened in Colorado over the last, oh gosh, 10 years now has it been? 2014. Yeah, 10 years. Uh, the last article I read, insurance rates are up and they contribute some of that to marijuana use. And that's just me reading articles. But uh, this is a one-sided uh, argument. We can find somebody that's much better than myself. Well, and and that's why I was very trying to No, I'm, I'm not sense. arguing, yeah. no, not in the sense right. of argument. I mean, in the sense of discussion, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Anybody else? Well, one of the reasons why I brought Jeff was because we all know that cons, I wanted to see what, if we wanted to be able to let your questions be answered like ours were a week ago. So that was the reason. One so, thing about it, Preacher, it's here. Yeah. It's been here for you. I years. understand that 100%. And I would be in the camp of we keep it out of the village of Hicksville for as long as you can. But that's, it's already that's, here. My, that's my opinion. And I think that is keeping our village safe. It's here unregulated. It could be laced with fentanyl and anything else. Well, I, I don't think legalizing uh, uh, marijuana is going to keep out the illegal marijuana. That ain't going to happen. Those guys are still going to be selling. There's still going to be black market. There's still going to be a black market. That is not, I don't think that's going to cut down. They're not allowed to possess so much. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, so. let's do talk about that in that this is not an either or proposition that if we legalize the black market goes away. That's that's not never been an argument. That's, that's, that's sure. exactly. But it is about removing the incentives for the illicit market to operate. And having tested regulated product absolutely takes money out of their pockets and ultimately they move on to other other areas and, and other industries. So Again, I'm, I am not saying this is a perfect solution by any means. So I, I, I don't want you or, or anyone here to, to, to take away from me standing here that I think this is a perfect drug, that it is ideal for this community. But as was pointed out, it's here and it's better regulated than left unregulated. And the idea that um, it's not legal in the village doesn't mean that you know, there are not plenty of operators. Around. Oh, absolutely. Right now, there's yeah. plenty of operators around. And, you know, we, we can address other other points. And I don't think we want this to get into a debate about no. gateway theory and all of this other stuff. But, um, I was curious, does the committee plan on meeting again to discuss it? We don't know that this is necessarily an ordinance committee situation. I mean, this is a the council. This is a whole right. group thing. I mean, we, right. we met to look at the, the language. It's not necessarily us making a decision to, or, or a recommendation to everyone else. I think we kind of just felt like this needs to be something that yeah, and this is for Rob was 100% on the fact that it, it needs to be the full council body discussing this and, and, and doing any decision making. And I back him 100%. Uh, the, the other thing I would add to that, and the, the village solicitor would, would know better, the 2019 ordinance, while it's silent on adult use, 
I think certainly an argument could be made that it applies. <coughs> that, that adult use was not a contemplated thing in 2019 because it was not legal here, but it certainly could be an addendum to it. Right. So. Mm -hmm. When I did talk to some of the mayors down there about the situation, and usually it's the, the mayors had a thousand people in them up to, you know, 20,000, 70,000. They're all kind of waiting to see what the state's going to do with the rest of the regulation and legislation before they make a decision. They are, most of them said they're going to take it back to their community, their council. That's a lot of discussion. It's a huge impact on our community in whichever way you, you go with it. So I thought Jeff could come tonight after ordinance had met and, you know, put some more information on the table and for us to think about it. It's a decision I don't want to make hastily. So. If we get some more discussion or talks, I encourage the people in the community, if you have questions, concerns, um, you know, reach out to us, reach out to council and, and myself and um, address your opinions on, on the matter, so. When will uh, decisions be made on, on giving out these licenses? Um, the first round, there, there's, no, there's no time frame. Um, I think they have to make a decision by end of September on this, but it's likely to move quickly. Those that are already licensed, there's not a, whole, a lot of additional evaluation that has to be done by the state. They just have to decide, do they want to allow expansion in this given marketplace? Um, but if they've been operating without any issues, citations, or anything like that, I, I would imagine that a lot of these initial rounds will get rubber stamped pretty quickly. But what about new? Uh, new, that, there's no time frame for that. The, the new operators, um, let me take a step back. Round one is existing medical use dispensaries applying for dual use. That would be sure. Mm -hmm. um, round two, coming in September, will be other licensed entities, so growers, processors, extractors, testing labs, wanting to expand into adult use dispensary. They'll have an opportunity. And then sometime after that, that has not been defined yet, there'll be another round of de novo business. Mm -hmm. got to sell stuff that they're Hmm? Somebody's got to sell the stuff that they're going to be mm -hmm. creating. So, quick question. So, you're a business guy that was looking to possibly open one, get a license for, let's say, Hicksville. Do you have a place already picked out or in mind? Not, not really. Um, you know, knowing the 500 foot uh, distance requirements, there, you know, there are not a, a lot of available options. Um, but yeah, there are a couple properties that I think seem like they would fit the bill. Now, are they available and, and could be acquired? That's a different story. But it, it, basically, we have enough enough time to, to give this a good, thorough uh, investigation and, mm -hmm. and speaking with the community and, and all the other community people uh, before you would be in a rush to, to go ahead and make up your mind here. We got to do something. I, I, I personally in no hurry. My, my position this is very reactionary. Mm -hmm. I don't have an interest in opening a, dis a dispensary for the sake of opening one, and wherever I can do it, I'll do it. Um, if there's an opportunity in Hicksville, I would like to see it done correctly and done professionally. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's why I, I'm looking at it. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate Thank you, Jeff. Have a good time. Mr. Mario, have we got any calls from any other outside places about what our stance is on this or where we're at? Well, no, not not local calls. The not only on the piece. outside. I had reached out to Brian. I heard that they had set up an ordinance here. No, I meant oh, like my. other business people that are interested if we go no. around. Uh, Just the, uh, I believe the two people that presented at the mayor's conference. Okay. I know more got back in the office and I didn't give them my email or phone number, but I had an email from them, I believe, okay. saying, hey, your town, I'm just being honest, your town would be a great place for an opportunity to set up shop. So. I did not reach back out to them, um, so, um, but no, that was it. I know I've, the mayors I've talked to down there, and I did reach out to Brian and, and ask them about their ordinance, and they have one kind of established. I don't know if it's in effect, but they were doing some things within the city of Brian, but that was it. Did we set up a special committee consisting of all of us? To review this? Come on. This is the committee. Right? It's kind of like a full council, but it's called these outside of regular meetings. Right. right. I don't think we're allowed to. Out yeah. with over three. I'd have yeah. to look, but. Well, I'm sure we have to no. yeah. follow all that stuff, but I didn't know if it's. Okay. I mean, if we want to set up a special council meeting just to address this issue and get some community input, and if people in the, in the meantime get some input from the community and want to bring it back to council, um, we can do that. So I wasn't sure, but we had a huge town hall. That's open. 
all that whole thing and we ended up putting it on the ballot. So yeah, I would say have a public meeting. Absolutely. <laughs> See what the public says, but I know I'm against it. So doesn't help us any. Sure. So yes, if we decide as a council to to have that public meeting and, and it open, we might need a bigger room, maybe for that type of thing. Yeah, so. please get a bigger room. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I can reach out to some of the bigger opportunities, like the conference rooms, and the, and the, and the Huber would be probably a good spot to have something like that. I mean. With the seating and everything, if two people do show up, so I will take a look at that tomorrow. Okay. Moving forward, meeting comments. Is that the rest of the committee reports? Anything else for that? Um, moving along, administrators report. Uh, I'll touch on a couple of these, unless you guys have questions. The uh, ball field lights are completely done, so those are in full operation. All the punch list items out to the metal lane of Beverly Drive have been completed. AEP was in today. They did lift, lift the transformer there on Old Mill Road, pulled that three quarter inch ground rod out, and we was able to repair it with just an eight inch uh, clamp around that sewer main. And the transformer has been put back into service. Um, we are still waiting for the bacteria testing to come back for the 300 block of East Cornelia and the 100 block of, of Rock Street. Both of those were actually pulled last week. We're hoping we'll have uh, an email in into us tomorrow, and then Homebrew can resume onto that project. We're on the east side of town. Um, anybody has any questions? I can. Uh, I, I need to. Go ahead. Ahead. Um, very last paragraph, Corey. Uh, towards the bottom, it says we are still awaiting approval from ODH, ODH yeah. on some changes. Uh, does that mean we're going to have to pay engineers to reprint something? Re I don't. I don't believe so. Uh, what What's going on is they're highlighting some stuff here. Uh, the design flow with addition to this dual wave slide they wanted on the splash pad has bumped the flow to 297.4 gallons per minute. And ODH wants it at 201.2 gallons per minute. And there's all there's a whole list of stuff that is going to have to be revised. Bigger pumps, upsize the piping to accommodate this one slide. Or is that money coming from? <coughs> that, that that would come from us because so they're, they're tapped out. Who's tapped out? The engineers? The foundation. Engineers don't get tapped out. They just no, 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 no. So if they have to make changes to something that they. They right. designed, I thought that they got the approvals through ODH. This, this, this dual wave change. slide, this is a change order? Yeah, by the foundation way. change. Yeah, yes. when they were going through picking the features because of, well, who, who were they going through originally? Vortex? Yes. And and they so the, the, the dual wave slide drive. was like a late ad. ODH is recommending, or they're proposing, that we remove the dual wave slide. They can't do that to us, can they? Just go, well, we're going to do this and you're paying for it. Well, we start building all the prints that were approved by Empire Power Health, and then they're modified. So then they say, well, you guys got to do this to make things work. And so you either pay the d a difference or take yep, it away. But the prints that they're working off of do not include these changes, do they? Who? The job prints that those guys are working on right now, working off of, did not include the changes that you have on that paper. The prints they are working off the prints, yes, that are on that on their on their prints. That's what they're working off of. The issue with the slide is is it's a special feature that does not meet uh, requires special features for a spray ground shall be limited to fountains or similar attractions. It appears that the proposed dual wave slide omni play <coughs> feature is not meeting the rules and cannot be installed. There there'd be a lot of red tape. And additional cost if they install that slide. Yeah, but they're, they're saying they're going to change the plan so that we can. Well, yes, but they well, have. Unless they got a cost. Yeah, that's oh, a question for yeah. them. Yes, that's a cost. Do we have the cost yet, or do we no, no, need no. to find the cost? Correct. Okay. Well, find the cost. Before find the cost, and then we make a decision based on that. But but ODH is, is basically stating that the rules, those. 
these do not meet the rules of a splash pad. A slide does not meet the rules of a splash pad. So, so okay, so I think I understand what's going on here. So they're saying if we put the slide in, we're going to need lifeguards. Is no. that what they're proposing? <laughs> no, it all, all, all yeah. It, a lot of it just comes down gallons per minute. Why do we even consider it? We didn't really have a say so on it. They picked all their features. We they mean, the meaning the people that raised all the money. Yeah, but they, they worked with engineers on options. All right, they right. picked pretty for much here's your how the things you can choose from. And that's they right. chose what they wanted. Well, we went to bid on this thing, and and, and the people that bid bid off a set of prints, and and that's that's what you do. That's how you build things, and that's how you get paid as a contractor. And now we've got this entered in here of changes that need made. It's going to have to be some engineering because you can't just go, let's change that. It doesn't happen that way. Plus, there's going to be additional cost. And now you're telling me that, that the people that raised all the money for this are coming up to you saying, you're they, paying they for it. No, they no, they're, no, no. Who's saying you weren't paying for it then? Well, well we, we would make a lot of decisions if we're going to pay for it. Who's we have to pay, pay for it. Number. Right. They don't have it. They don't have the funds to. Is it a matter of taking a dual slide and making it into a single slide? Originally, it was. <laughs> yeah. But is it a matter of doing that no. again? Like just <laughs> Would that eliminate if it was a single slide versus a dual? I haven't seen the uh, response letter from ODH. So. If that changes that two back down to that two hundred. <laughs> it changes a lot of things. You know, obviously, the flow rates, uh, bigger holding tank, bigger reservoir. Hmm. Okay. I, I will say, correct me if I'm wrong here, but this went out to bid. And they had a certain contractor all the splash pad. They had an unexpected death, as in the owner passed away, mm -hmm. and they ended up switching to another contractor that had splash pad features, but they were different. And then the committee got together and they compared what they had chose the first time and selected items that were similar. And some well, of the similarities were, were a little bit more expensive. They, yeah, they were advised that it was there was that that was kind of the match. So they, yeah. I don't even know that they would have known that right. this is the situation. Right, no, I don't believe that. There's, oh, there's, no. And then there's a lot of They can't do that to us. There's a lot of verbiage that is goofed up, like uh, on their data sheet that was submitted to ODH, it shows maximum filter capacity instead of what it should read as flow rate per square feet. There's just, so there's a lot of correcting verbiage sending it back for ODH approval and they are very, very, very slow. But but everything that's here that what I've heard so far is uh, your pumps are too, gonna be too slow, your storage is gonna be too slow. Uh, how are you starting over again? No, I guess how do we get this far into it? I, I thought that this was resolved no, once I'm ago kidding. when we well, broke ground. Everything that they've gotten done so far has been approved by ODH. All the piping that's laid. If you go down there and look, you'll see where they have kind of stopped and not brought it into the building yet. That's why the building is not up. That's why part of the weather and the whole hold up of ODH, that's why you don't see a roof, you don't see walls up. Mm -hmm. We're still waiting for their approval. And it's been a fight between Nagels and Sixmo and ODH. So we're just on the sidelines waiting for a resolution? Yes. Okay. Do we have a date? Date for completion? Resolution. Right. Date where they not come when it come, Not when we come to the stage. Right. No. So well, we've got a, a somewhat of a date because, you know, they moved it from July to August the 1st. Yeah. So something's going to happen between now and then. Yeah, but I, I, I get an email every day that, oh, we should have an answer tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We should have an answer tomorrow. From Sixmo or? From ODH. 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 Okay. If Nagel's got a order new pumps or upsize stuff or whatever, do you already have the old ones ordered? Well, I'm sure he does. Yeah. Is he able to just change that flow by just changing the piping? No, they, they, they would have to upsize the piping. Yeah, to, yeah increase the But they got upsized right. pump. But, too. Any, but like you say, if they change the pump and they, they upsize the pump, it's a different brand. ODH, you can't just. Change the yeah, ODH has to. No, that that little sentence right there is going to be really, really expensive. Yeah. We meet we meet again tomorrow at twelve thirty. So just remember that you guys signed off anything over eight hundred thousand you were going to pay for it back in November when you voted on this. Just saying. That's this is 
Mm -hmm. I can't tell you what this is because he'll make me he'll beep it. Well, if you can get uh, a response from the contractors in ODH, yeah, well, it's all it's all with ODH and really what we want to do or not want to do. And either way, like myself, I'm stuck between a rock and a rock. Period. So, if you could let council know what uh, they decided on that and. My, my question is, didn't when they switched the things to that, did they not let them know with that change order with the different slides it would take more I'm capacity, assuming, more, more a lot of this. Who let who know? Well, I mean, the company that sold it to them. I mean, they would know the piping and, and you know, they're all part of that whole process. But when you, when you change your... They your didn't change months. that. They changed something that's not even on those prints. They, they just went, well, we're going to do this. Because the, the company didn't a, a lot of a lot of this has been waiting not all of it but some of this has been waiting odh approval for you know well after construction started we're still waiting on some of the odh approval on every little step of the way how can you how can you start a, a construction project without approval on anything they had, enough, only they, had enough, they had enough odh approval to get going on the project you know who, who would have thunk odh would have all these restrictions and regulations on it. Yeah. Well, they yeah. should, right? Yeah. Like they, they yeah. Just well, what no, they, 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 they did. The engineers even before. there, they're even there, sitting there scratching their head, wondering why there's all this red tape on these loopholes. These guys work with ODH all the time with all right. the projects around the state. So right. So they're kind of questioning why ODH is. Have up. you talked with Morgan Montgomery? Uh, a little bit at the beginning. What's, what's his feelings on this? I haven't talked to him about that. Oh, he's not my go-to guy. So he's not the who's project manager. <coughs> he's the main cog for Nagel. Yeah, Quinn is the one who I deal with. He's our project manager. Yeah, so. he's just he's running the crew down here. Right. Wait, wait, wait uh, Morgan, he runs the show. Well, if you once you hear something, can you let us know? I know we won't meet for two weeks, but uh, if you hear anything, email us all. Yeah, would be wonderful. So we meet at 12.30 tomorrow. And before we move, um, I just wanted to take the time to thank our uh, police department, fire department, EMS from that wreck last Friday. And we talked about being down a squad. And I don't know if any of you guys were down there and witnessed anything that was going on. But I physically watched one of our firemen having to run from <clears throat> that scene to the fire hall, come back with all kinds of supplies. I seen Abby running down there working out of that building since there wasn't a second squad to work on i just hope that we get some figured out sooner than later and get them in the squad we should have our our, our five ten should be done and back within yeah but what we do when it right. comes back and two weeks later there's a another electrical issue with it and she's down I mean, it's, it's kind of the old school Hicksville mentality when it comes to our vehicles. We just beat them to death. Beat them to death. Well, That's what we're going to be looking at, so. We can only afford so much stuff. I, I grew up that if you didn't have money to buy something, you didn't do it. And uh, damn, around here, we just. Hell, let's buy a new truck. Well, that's, let's that's, do this and let's do that's that. That's what people have been, here been programmed for for years. I do have a question about the old baseball field light fixtures. Are any of them usable? Are we saving them? Or are we going to just put them on gut deals? We could gut deals or we could scrap them. Okay. Well, I just gut deal them. If any of them are functional, I think we should gut deal them. Because otherwise, they're just going to sit and become <clears throat> antiquated. I don't know how much value is there, but. Okay. Thank you, Corey. Anything else for Corey? Nope. Okay. Um, Blizzard report. <coughs> okay, so we got first reading of Ordinance 2024 11 by caption only to amend Chapter 951 regarding refuse collection. And then we have first reading of Ordinance 2024 12 by caption only to amend the regulations of public nuisances. Can I ask you a question on that, Rachel? On uh, public nuisances, uh, Article A, uh, we have as unfit for human habitation, and we're talking buildings or parts thereof, 
which have following defects are deemed dangerous as unfit for heat. <clears throat> we're, we're trying to eliminate dwellings, but yet we're saying that human, uh, human habitation, should, should that be in there? I mean, we changed it from a home to a, to a dwelling, and now we're saying you can't live there. It, it affects it. I'm not steering, I'm asking. Mm -hmm. You're saying because it says human habitation, habitation. Meaning, that it's gonna limit. meaning that it's not safe for you to live in it. Right. But uh, if it's a barn, uh, then you could go out and condemn just about any barn you wanted to. Because they're not designed to be lived in. Isn't that why we changed it from dwelling to structure? Structures mm -hmm. to encompass all the well, different types of yes. Should that word then be also be read above, above yeah. what us? And where it says deemed dangerous dwellings, should that be deemed dangerous structures? Structures. Yeah. Since we don't have dwellings listed anywhere after if it gets changed. Take out the take out the dwellings also and put structure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, when, would it be this was, this was two this was two not handcuff Jared when he was going out to. Mm -hmm. right yeah, and, and I'm all for it. It's yeah. just that I, I think that uh, you take certain people, they'll they'll find a way around it. Yeah. Like you saying like just removing anything after condemned? Is that what you're okay. saying? Yeah. Un well, un unfit for even habitation. If you did habitation, that would eliminate the guys as well. I'm gonna keep a cow in there, but you can't. No habitation. Right. Uh, yeah, let me look at it. Does that sound right to you guys? Yeah, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Because we, uh, in talking to, uh, with Jared uh, last week, uh, he's about to venture into a section of town that there's going to be a lot of a kickback mm -hmm. and and things like that. A good, a good attorney can get around that. Okay. okay thank yeah. you. Yep. Yep. Um, okay, and then first reading of Ordinance 2024-13 by caption only to amend the policy for the installation and replacement of sidewalks. I got a question on that one. On the H, you're saying that filler cement cannot be permitted to level an obstruction. And just throw concrete on top of concrete. Well, that's not the way And I that's always been there too. You find an obstruction. Uh, trip hazard. Okay. So if you have one that's down and you want to pick it up and take the sacrate and shove under there, that's lovely. Yeah, I think that's G. That's, yeah, that's G. That's where that's it says proper level. Permitted to level an obstruction. Proper level. Right here. Uh huh. So this proper is level. I'm just saying permitted to reduce any obstruction. Bag of sack tree and add water to it and throw it on top and just try to mud it. Proper to leveling it shall be permitted to reduce any obstruction. And then you say that you can't use cement to fix the uh, level, to level the obstruction. That's. Well, then maybe it should say that filler cement shall not be used on top of existing cement. Cannot be bonded to the top. Right. Because it won't bond anyhow. Right. That'll be more defined. Yeah, that would make it clear, right? Yeah. That's what we're trying to do. So, I would say for H, say, use your lawyer terminology and say <laughs> the concrete has to, or the, anything has to go underneath it. <coughs> well, well, you, you got the expertise. Filler cement should not be permitted uh, for leveling a top. Of course, you could, you, get in, you could get into uh, depth, uh, it, unless it's a, a thickness of four four inches overall. You know, if, you're, if you've got a sidewalk that's down that far and you want to pour over top of it, that's, you know, they do that all the time. Uh, but what are the issues with doing that? Because if the foundation's bad, doesn't, isn't the stuff that's going on top just gonna... Oh, I, know, I, I, I tore out sidewalks in the, you know, 30 years ago, 25 years ago, there was three sidewalks in it. Oh, they just put them on top yeah. of each other? Uh, 
But that the way that's worded, uh, you're going to get yourself in trouble. That's all. Okay. Um, and then first reading of ordinance 2024-14 by caption only to amend the annual appropriation to the planning emergency. you need that as an emergency? I move we suspend the rules. Second. Roll call. Beverly? Yes. Martin? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Miller? Yes. Edwin? Yes. Essex? Yes. Cheryl, was that by the baskets? Is that what? Is that to buy the baskets? You found it. I don't know what they actually are. What are they? Is that for the first big old? Yeah. That's like $5,700 for 18 of the baskets. Yeah. Good. So they're ordered. Yes. Nine red, nine black. They got some good news the other day. Did you tell you that? So, um, second and final reading of Ordinance 2024 dash 14 by caption only to amend the annual appropriations and declare the emergency. So second. Roll, roll call. We should play. Bassett? Yes. Manley? Yes. Yeah. Beverly? Yes. Martin? Yes. Miller? Yes. Eglin? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, department heads, police, Chief Dennings. So the only thing I have is going to introduce you to our newest officer, uh, K-9 Echo, along with his handler, Officer Shane Balser. Anybody want to pet him? So, yeah. maybe so <laughs> We've done three tracks with him. Uh, and I think this is our third week. We've already done three tracks. And we uh, papers and everything. found drugs in a car a breeze. Saturday night. You pulled him? Wow. You going to take him home once a year? Checking out the Visit? Yes. No. <laughs> 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 Cheryl. Uh-oh. Got a hit. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. <laughs> they don't smell marijuana. Mm. Is that right, yep. Shane? Yep, yeah. he is trained in all drugs besides marijuana. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's cool. So he's even so, trained in fentanyl. So load up the car. So I think right now we may be the only dog right now that's trained. In fentanyl. You've got some news on what he's done so far? We've done three tracks so far uh, two for the county, one for us. Uh, he just got his first dope fine with cocaine Saturday night. So, so you're not taking him home anymore, are you? <laughs> <laughs> so he's been doing very well. So, uh, I love program done good. Thank you. Well, thank you for bringing him tonight. Does he get along with the family? He's like one of the kids now. Yes. <laughs> and I see you some interaction in the community. I had driven by and you had him out, and some of the kids were petting him and. Um, like yeah, so we've done a couple. We did Safety Town last week with him. Uh, County. He went to Williams County to do their day in the park with them. Uh, he's doing a event at State Bank. Is it this coming Friday? Yes. Some event at State Bank. Uh, will, will he so. attack on command? Yeah, so. It's what we call a dual sure. purpose. He's trained in tracking, aggression, and narcotics. Um, he's a dual purpose dog. So he can do it all. So Thank you. Yeah. Next we have uh, Chief Garrett. You got anything tonight? Mm -hmm. Not a whole lot, but you know, I'm going to get up here because that's what I guess I'm told to do. Um, I don't have a whole lot. I just want to follow up on what had been previously going on in my small time uh, in this position. Um, I still need to follow up with the great guy. I had mentioned last council meeting as far as what he said he could get a grant for the Quint and replace the, the old engine, 503, and the tower truck. Um, 
he'll be back, uh, I believe, from vacation, either like Tuesday or Wednesday. So I'm going to reach out to him and get those numbers or see what they look like to bring to y'all because that's what y'all ask. Um, we're actively getting these guys um, these physicals that they need to go to the academy in Columbus uh, at the end of August. So uh, I believe we have all guys scheduled for the physicals, so that's leading in the right direction as far as uh, getting them before the deadline, before July, um, to go down to Columbus for those two weekends in August. Um, hopefully that we don't miss the deadline, that they can get in right now. There's still vacancies uh, for them, but they have to have their physicals first. So all that is scheduled in the various areas around. Um, the people have been great about um, the different hospitals have been great about getting these guys in. So that's a positive thing. Uh, gear, I've been working shortly as far as getting these guys gear. Um, the big concern with that is um, Rick uh, have been working wonderfully about uh, this gear, these guys that have indeed and outdated gear. There's a, there's a place that uh, in Richmond that does gear, uh, not Richmond, I'm sorry, Fort Wayne, that does gear. Uh, and I need to follow up on that to see the turnaround time. Bruce was just at a convention this weekend. And he told me that there's another agency, Lion Company, which is a big gear brand, that um, if we contact him, he said that he'd be willing to work with us as far as getting these guys fitted and um, even rental gear if we need it. But I need to figure out what the rental price is for you guys to approve it or not. Um, the reason why I say it is because sometimes gear it has a turnaround, a long turnaround time. So like the last gear we got that before Kramer left, from the time that we got fitted to the time of gear, it was like 16, 17 months. We don't have that kind of time. Um, so um, the rep that Bruce said he spoke with said that their turnaround time is 60 to 90 days, uh, as far as that goes. So that's going to be very important. I say that because I have three or four new guys who either don't have pants. They do have pants, but they're outdated. So I'm not going to send them into a structure with outdated pants because, you know, luck may not be on our side. And if something was to ever happen, knock on wood, that we could be held liable. And jackets. So the main issue is jackets. Uh, some people don't have jackets turn out coats and pants. So that's a huge priority right now on the fire side. Getting these guys either gear or it's a temporary thing, driving to Fort Wayne and getting these guys fitted and speaking to Cheryl to see what the money looks like to be able to get these guys fitted. Um, that is the other thing. And then other than that, um, I do want to tag in on what Corey was saying. And we had a little PF meeting last week I just want to reiterate how really we came together over the weekend. We talked about call by them and runs in the last week or so. It's been terrible. Like, but we've pulled together. We had a big accident on the corner and our response or however the case may be. It wasn't even our squad that were involved. And that's what I mean by we're a team at the end of the day. Because we had Sherwood and Edward and our squad was driving past because they were just on a call. Just yesterday, we had four calls within an hour of each other. You know, total of five within three or four hours. So businesses picking up as far as that goes. And just to reiterate the whole importance of EMS, which he could talk more on that. But as far as us combined, it's going to be very important for us to make sure we have operating equipment and get the staff eventually because if what looks like these last few days, we're going to be in for a long ride for the village if we don't get these things together. All right. Other than that, unless y'all have any questions, I don't have it with some. Can you uh, refresh my memory on what, what did you say it was going to be per man for uh, turnout gear? Well, ballpark. I, um, when Kramer fitted uh, the guys out, he said the gear was 4500 per set from head to toe. Brand, all brand new, though. All brand new gear uh, from head to toe. Bruce A. spoke with a gentleman from the Lions Company, and he said their gear is 3700 
that's from head to toe. 37 per, per unit. 3700 per, per person. Um, and, and they get their gear after they pass physical and the entry course, or well, how does it work? These guys can get gear now. We have gear right now. They get the gear. We're just saying that. Oh, you're saying if you already have gear that's available for them? Yes, but okay. we don't have gear that is available for some of these guys. I got you. We have the gear, but it's outdated. Okay. So it's like expired. Right, yeah. It's yeah. Got a shelf, well, not shelf yes. life, but usability life for Yes, safety. eight yeah. years, 10 years, okay. certain things. And that goes down to the NFPA standard. Yep. And we okay. follow how that long is, How long has that gear been expired? Um, the gear that I want to replace now uh, has been expired range of anywhere from a few months. Some of the boots have been expired for a while. Um, I would say almost a year. Some of the other gear only has a few months of expiration. I would say six months or less. Was somebody using it prior or was it just? Some of the gear uh, that Rick had separated had been gear that had just been sitting there that because of our low numbers, we didn't have, okay. we didn't have need for it. So when, it, when these six guys come in, we need to find gear for them so they can start running. And so when checking the end dates and expiration dates, a lot of this gear had to be pushed off to the side because it wasn't uh, within the NFPA standard. Is there a reason why you're keeping the expired gear? Well, this is all new, uh, ma'am. So I need to figure out where we're going to put this gear. So regardless of where I take this gear, it's expired, so I don't know the disposal or how they do away with it. Now, it could be used for some kind of training or whatever that's not on, on or off the records, and we had to use it as training if guys just wanted to use the gear, but I can't normally send these guys into right. a fire right. Right. and know if their gear's expired. Would you be able to reach out to any of your prior contacts from your experience in Columbus and see what, how they handle the gear? I sure can. Because I, I know they have a lot more volume, but they, and obviously they have a lot more money, but you know, the question is, does any of that gear that's expired hold any value or trade-in value or something like that? I could definitely check in that because okay. that's not something that uh, I generally know because of right. bigger cities. Mm -hmm. If your gear is outdated, there was a whole new department, right. a gear department, that just took care of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if it wasn't your job or mm -hmm. you wasn't in that, mm -hmm. in that area, you didn't worry about the gear. All you know is that, hey, getting your old, and here's your new. So Rick's your gear department? Well, Rick has been, Rick has been amazing by yeah, separating. He's he done an amazing you, job. I, I can't answer questions too. Okay. Yeah, right. he's he done an amazing job by going up there and separating the new from the old. Yeah, it sounds that like something that had to be done a long time ago. Yes, it's something that's been in the works that needed to be done. Yeah, so thank you so much. Is, cool. is if you have expired gear in there, can we get in trouble for that? Yeah. Not if it's no. not on them. Okay, because coming from the medical world, if you yeah. have expired gear in your truck, you could get in trouble for that. Yes. So I didn't know if that was the same for. No, no. gear gear can sit gear can sit in storage forever. It could be in our department. Okay. Let me hug you. Yeah. <laughs> Since I've been working on, uh, we have several firefighters have had to turn off your boots that are four years expired and still going to buildings. Timmy's being one of them. Um, we do have boots ranging that are out of date. That the new guy, well, the new guys not have new boots. Do we, we got the one coming? Yeah. Have they come yet? I just ordered boots. Okay, right but they were anywhere from a year out to two or three years expired. Um, we have everyone now has turnout gear, new guys wise that I found. Some are expired. Some are about to expire. Mm -hmm. But if they go to the academy, they have to have good turnout gear. It right. has to be within that 10 year span. Okay. So they don't actually have it. Because they get inspected. Yes. Okay. Question for you, Rick. Yeah. Uh, you might remember or years ago, uh, I think I think Stopper was, was uh, chief, but we sent a bunch of equipment to like third world countries or something. You can? And also uh, Bruce Hart, where he went to for his, wherever he went, South Carolina, I do believe, for his, the school that he's going to, they will take it from us. <coughs> They'll use it for their students. Four County may even use it for us, for their students. I would like to see an avenue like that yeah. soon. And also, if we get the, the export yeah. program started up, back up again and get your grandson up here, he can use it. Mm -hmm. Because the export program, you're not going to go into the fire, but you can go to our training. 
Plus they have their own training. So that's stuff that they could use. Well, that's what I thought with the third world country. I mean, the out of date equipment is still a whole lot better than a pair of cutoff shorts and a t-shirt. Correct. Yeah, I think that program still exists. But I like the idea of, of uh, four, county. four County. I like that idea. Yep, because they're not going to burn buildings either. Right, and, and to kind of keep it here and, and save the tax dollars. Yeah, I like that. I'm not too sure who you could contact for it, but yeah. I'll, I'll write some down. I will make some calls Jeff to Slattery. Four County. Yeah, Jeff Slattery, yeah, the superintendent. I will make some calls to Columbus yeah, thank uh, you. and see see how they do with their expired gear, that sort of thing, and what their process is. They got so much money, maybe they get rid of it two years before it's expired. <laughs> <laughs> Go down well, there and get it. Another thing, though, that, that, that our gear may say, and of course, I don't know how it wears itself out, but our, my, our gear might say it's wore out, but it might only have been worn. 100 times or 50 times or something. It's probably the same as the bullet for the dust. They tell you in five years, regardless. Yeah. Yeah. Need or not. Yeah. Yeah. Now, does yeah. the equipment have a stamp on it that says when the expiration date is? Yeah. 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 Boots and everything. So, on the fire side, uh, outside that, uh, uh, right now, as far as the disposal, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and go from there. Um, like I said, I so far in this short time, I've seen a lot of, I don't want to jinx it, a lot of good participation and uh, togetherness. Uh, we've pulled together, like I said, you know, some of the young guys who, who responded over here and they've done great. Some of the new guys responded to some of the accidents here lately and they've been, I think we could do so really well, but like I said, if this continues, we had a big, they had a big fire in Sherwood over the weekend. Um, and so a lot of those guys were out there as well. But I want to get these guys seasoned and ready so when that time comes, there's no hesitation. We don't have to worry about them not being able to get experience and learn by keeping them outside the structure because they don't have the proper gear. And that's the, that's the biggest important thing. All right. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A couple things. First of all, uh, I do want to say thank you for the vote earlier tonight. Um, but when we had our PFP meeting, I will say that uh, we kind of came to an agreement that this has been a long time issue. It's not just a 2024 issue. It's a it's a 20 year issue. Um, yeah, right now, right now, I've got some of the best people I could ever ask for. I've there's nobody that I wouldn't go to bat for and I'll stand behind each and every one of them. Uh, with that being said, I wanna kind of touch on a couple things that, you know, Derek mentioned. Friday, we had a, uh, we had a uh, EMS call 10 minutes before a two vehicle injury accident down here at the corner. Unfortunately, our squad was tied up on that prior call. We had Rebecca, Abby, and a few other people that went down in their personal vehicles because they knew it was going to be some time. And yes, there was firefighters, and I know Abby uh, ran back to the fire station to get supplies. Um, that's dedication. So. This isn't directed towards council. This is directed towards all those Facebook warriors out there. Mm -hmm. You got something to say, my number is 419-542-1348. Call me. Sorry. You got something to say, say it. Otherwise, otherwise, I will back my EMTs 100% seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Unfortunately, there has been some t some issues in the past couple weeks where we haven't been able to respond. 
or it's taken us a little longer on scene than what we wish. There's nothing I can do about that. Again, if you're not on my scene, don't talk. That's just the way it is. Um, I'm hoping that this, uh, that with these new people, we will make sure that everything is covered, as, as we say. Over the weekend, since Friday, I'm just gonna tell you, we've had 15 runs since Friday. Okay, so the amount of runs have taken off like I thought that they would. Unfortunately, it's all been, most of, the, most of it's been car accidents and high level, high level uh, breathing problems, things like that. You know, things where, you know, we need to be going to Brian Defiance, um, which we already are. You know, like, I, like it was said, we are, we are, our average run time is an hour and a half. And, you know, anybody that, anybody that wants to join the EMS, I'll gladly take you. You know, what? We'll, we'll put you through the class. Yes? If, if uh, when you get up, go out on a call, uh, unless they say, hey, I want to go to Parkview, do you have a, a place where you're headed? Well, for the most part, for the most part, it, it's, it's like this. If, if, a car, if and I'm just going to use you as an example, okay? Let's say let's say that you called and said that you have severe chest pain, and I we did a we did an EKG on you, and I saw something that said, okay, you need, and you said I want to go to Paulding. I'm going to look at you and go, no, you need to go to Brian or you need to go to Parkview. You go, those are your two choices, okay? But, but and, anything less than anything else, uh, anything less, yeah. We've we've taken a couple people over to Paulding. Uh, most of the time, we're going to Brian or Defiance. Yeah. Um, Brian or Defiance. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, a lot of the uh, nursing home. Uh, I will say this: a lot of the nursing home uh, people are going to Brian or Defiance uh, because of Medicaid, Medicare issues. Uh, I will say that, and I, I think I've talked to, I've, I've called the mayor a couple times. The the nursing home does call us from time to time, or the, the hospitals that we take them to uh, will call and say, hey, can you guys transfer back? Uh, no. Unfortunately, because we're down to one squad, you know, we're, we just can't do that. You know, we're a 911 service, you know. Um, but that being said, it is going to be hot this week. So please, 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 everybody, drink plenty of water. If you're starting to feel dizzy, call us, you know. And it doesn't mean that you have to automatically go to the hospital. If you're starting to feel dizzy, short of breath, anything, give us a call, okay? We're more than happy to come out. If there's nothing else. Uh, Is there any cooling stations? Anywhere? Yes, I was gonna address that at the end of the meeting. I got places and hours. Okay. I was gonna, I was gonna say the hospital used to be, yeah. but, yeah. but, uh, yeah. uh, but. Um, billing. Oh, yes, uh, sorry about that. Um, so I was able to talk to Michelle on Friday, and uh, she said that, number one, we, uh, we, won't, we may not see anything until the middle of next month, okay, uh, just from their turnaround time. Now, from the issue that had come up from last year, okay, they have not heard anything about uh, about a reimbursement or about you know we're not getting paid they haven't heard anything yet so she's kind of hoping that 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 has kind of been moved aside and, and we should be getting some money um, I do know that uh, the mayor and I talked and uh, there we the the hospital down here was able was getting some extra money because they were a critical access hospital and uh, he was told that there might be a possibility of us tapping into some of that. I'm not sure. Um, I am going after grants. There, the BWC grant is opening back up. Um, we've been told, so I'll be going after that. Um, we did put in for two grants that uh, we should be 
should be knowing within the next uh, two weeks whether or not we got. So uh, one of one of them is for five thousand. The other one I think I put in for twenty eight thousand. But uh, it's just little grants here and there, but it does help. Yeah. So um, you talk about also doing a class, maybe if you could fire up a yeah class with Sherwood. Yeah. So right now, uh, right now the 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 cost on a basic EMT for a basic EMT is, through uh, four County is fifteen hundred dollars, um, and because of schedules, some people may may or may not be able to go to those classes. Uh, we were Daryl and I are trying to uh, come up with a plan where we can possibly bring either a class to Sherwood or a class here. Um, I do know that uh, we're, we are trying to get an advanced class here. Um, I don't, not sure how that's going to operate yet uh, because I, I've got to go through four county and, and, and all that. Um, I will say that I haven't scheduled our next uh, training yet, but uh, our uh, medical director is scheduled to make another visit in September and we're going to do an education day so you guys are more than welcome to come over you know, at any time. Um, and uh, lastly, uh, Thursday night we are taking games and uh, Derek, but we are taking some games and that's games to the Huber for the for the concert. So. Yeah, uh, summer concert series. The next one is June twentieth, which is Thursday evening from five thirty to seven. Uh, I asked the it's kids' nights. The theme this one. Uh, we're inviting all the kids to come down. Lifeline Connects sees churches doing burgers and hot dogs and uh, was it uh, filet mignon? <laughs> well, we sweat underneath the grill. It's going to be hot. Uh, it's going to be hot. But Heidi Baxton and I reached out to these guys. We got themes, but uh, I asked the EMS and fire department to bring games down. We've got prizes, candy, things like that. Just the kids have some fun and listen to Heidi Paxson perform at the Huber at 5.30. So, but I appreciate the squad doing that, the fire department, everybody coming down to help with that. Yeah. So. And, and once again, uh, thanks for earlier. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, the, the run volume has increased no matter what, uh, no matter what we, we want. So um, that's it. Any questions for Bruce? No, thanks, Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. I know you put in a lot of work to get to this point. We appreciate it. Something I can add to that too. That that seminar was at. They had the state, one of the state main directors, grant directors there. Um, she had brought up some of the opportunities for. We're not the only town dealing with the situation with fire protection, EMS protection kind of thing. Um, but there are some grant opportunities out there for hiring, uh, payroll, and maybe some opportunities for equipment. So. Um, she said there's federal grants, state grants, but like these guys that work on grants a lot, it's not an easy task. And I was going to get with Bruce and Derek and you know the guys at the departments to maybe look at some other opportunities. And I have her direct number now, so I'd like to find out which grants we can apply to, make so we're just not dragging our feet. But uh, we had some uh, new opportunities. Derek had spoke with the guy that got us the right. last the truck, truck, correct? He doesn't do, from what I understand, he's he doesn't deal with the EMS squads. Right. He's not back yet. Right. Uh, and can he, you get with him also, with you and Derek, and see if he can get you a squad too? So there's no, not work with so I, I, so I've already talked to him about that. Uh, okay, because of the age of, of the new squad, for us to get a squad, the average age of both squads has to be at least 15 years old. Right now, the average age is nine, and there's no grants out there that, that he knows of okay. for, for, for ambulances. But yeah, that I looked into that a long time ago. I'm sure you would have, but Corey, when uh, he was talking about van crash, it reminded me, are we still getting our pumps plugged up? We haven't, no. I, I paid him a visit. You did? Yeah, I paid him a visit. Did you return uh, the rags? <laughs> yeah, I the cloth, what cloth? They wanted they wanted to make sure they were players. Uh -huh. And I showed them a couple pictures and <coughs> the lady's name sewed in a tag. Oh so, man. Yeah. 
they turn around, they turn around and show me what they were doing. They put some type of like mesh screens and all the stools. And oh, wow, okay, good. Okay. Oh, oh, goodness. Hmm? But it didn't be a little windy. Glad he's down there. <laughs> I don't see Val or Gary here tonight. Um, we're up to the fiscal <coughs> report. Um, you might have any questions about the current list of revolving fund and loans? For the May Mayor's Court, um, which the numbers are much better. Not have people going, walking by going, what is going on in there? <clears throat> That's the last Mayor's Court. But it was good. Um, we have the Hicksville Police Department pay ins and a list of permissible executive sessions. Thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. Well, Three hours, 15 minutes sunshine law training. This is the most important thing I got out of it. <laughs> <laughs> but you already have. Oh, sure. I just can't remember. No, no, that was only four or five. Why were you looking at me, Sharon? Are you just that fond of me? You're just in my line of sight. She was looking at me. Yeah. 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 For the fondness. So does, since Eric took it, do the, the rest of us need to as well, or does that count for all of us? I haven't scheduled the take. Which one, the ethics or the? Uh, I guess seventh, maybe. Okay, I need to look. I need both mine. Right? Right? I think she gave it to us last week. I'm good with both, right? I did both mine. Perfect. Mayor's report. It's up to me. Um, we already talked about my mayor's training. I went to uh, summer council. We talked about that. Uh, I want to thank the Nine of Lights. They had their festival here this last Friday out at the school. Uh, they raised money for people in need and. A lot of um, groups and individuals put uh, time and effort into that uh, function out there festival and thank them for doing that was last Jan, uh, June 14th. Um, I got an email today and I never, something I don't think about, but um, cooling centers in the community and I reached out to um, EMA um, and Cheryl and I said, do we have cooling centers in our community? And we actually do. Um, the senior center is a cooling center, but that's on High Street down there. Um, but they are open Mondays and Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 2, but you can go in there from those hours, and if you're, if you're in a situation where you need some air conditioning, they allow you in there. Also, the Johnson Memorial Library is also a, another cooling center, so you get to read books, maybe watch TV, computers, lots of activities in there. Uh, their hours are Monday through Saturday, uh, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. They are closed Thursdays. So they're open a lot more hours. Um, they do encourage people to come down there and utilize the library and cool off in their air conditioning. So, um, and we also offered the uh, council room here. Uh, we're open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, Cheryl will provide uh, candy and refreshments for everybody. I'm joking. <laughs> Homemade biscuits. <laughs> I'm joking. You got a referral? But, referral uh, water bottle station out there. Right. Um, but we do have this facility here. So if you are in need of the cool off in the situation, it's hot. It's going to be stay hot. So. Uh, we can reach out to the community and, and utilize those spaces uh, for, for the residents. Um, I wanted to thank the Beautification Committee for the flowers downtown and the different flower stations they have in our community. It's beautiful. I don't know if you've been through town at 9, 10 o'clock at night in the dark, but they're out there watering them. It takes a long time. They have to refill their, their wagon a lot, but uh, they've done that for years. Um, I want to thank them for their efforts in making our town look a little bit better downtown and surrounding areas. So thank you for the beautification committee. Uh, I am going to remind people next year this town turns 150 years old. I think we need to do a, a celebration, several days, and uh, being I think it was in June of 18 something. I think we should have it in September when it's not so hot. Oh yeah, you want to do it. At a <laughs> But uh, I want to start working with area organizations, um, working to come together and plan a festival to celebrate this town's um, heritage and, and history. So uh, you'll be working on that. I have formed a committee for that. Yeah, I'll put you guys in. Bring it back. Right. So I don't think I have anything else. Any questions for me? I do. I sent an email last week asking about EMS funding budgets, about getting financials. I haven't seen anything response really yeah you sent that to me and I know since they were talking um, I did not pass that on to Cheryl because I know they were talking to her about yeah that seemed like a little staffy um, right. talking squad right payment loan 
use new equipment? Terms? I think if we're definitely going to go down that road, if we're choosing as a council to purchase, I mean, yes, those are numbers we have to pull up. I know Bruce had found one. There is a demo unit. It's still available. Yeah, I brought it here four days ago. Yeah. It's right. Currently, if I'm wrong, it's about two seventy. Okay, how much is that? Is that a month? I we didn't that's get that far until right yeah, last right. week. Um, it still needs to be outfitted. I mean, that's the baseline yeah. model. How many months? How much money down? What's the interest rate? Seven point. Those are questions I'd love to have on paper. Yeah. Ask if we could have it in our packet. Seven so we can point start one. Over, but we haven't got anything yet, so. Okay. And I'll, I'll go back to you on that. That's when the much. committee met, Eric, um, if they were going to discuss that any further with the new squad and bring it back to council, those were definitely numbers of Cheryl. Well, like Corey said, you know, we can't keep throwing four or five thousand dollars into this one that's down more than it's running. All right. Another question. Yeah, can I just make a statement about 511? Sure. Come on up. I feel like, okay. I feel like with 511, as an EMT who's going to be in that often, I don't feel safe in that. So now you're asking me to bring patients into that. And for me, I'm, I'm not comfortable with that at all. Last why, aren't, time, why aren't you safe in it? Why don't you feel safe? Last time trustworthy? I drove that, it was at night, and we lost all lights with the patient in the back. No lights, no headlights, nothing. We couldn't see the road. So what happens if I'm going 60 miles per hour and we lose all lights? Now you've got a huge lawsuit on your hands. So now we have this $6,000 that we're gonna spend on the squad that's gonna fix a leak. It has nothing to do with the electrical problems that we keep having recurring. That was allegedly fixed? Yes, it's been allegedly times. fixed four times. Yeah, but they said they completely- That's what they said four the times. the truck down and rebuilt it. Every time they say that and then it comes back to the same thing. We don't have heat, we don't have air on and off, we don't have lights. The last time I drove that, which was before it was fixed last time, we were going to a call and lost everything again after it was allegedly fixed. Like we can't keep doing this because it's our safety and our patient's safety. And I'm not gonna be the one that's on that squad getting a lawsuit because we end up hurting someone. It's, it's not fair to any of us. We're putting in all these hours and we're asking for a squad that we can't get. So now now our life is on the line and our patients' lives are on the line. I don't think that's good for the community. If we want to have a full service for EMS, then it needs to be a full service for EMS. If that's what we're offering to our village. <clears throat> well, currently you don't have enough people to staff it anyhow. Well, the second runs that we've had this weekend, we had people to cover, but we haven't had a squad to cover. We can run across the street when it's when it's right there. When you're out in the county, we can take our personal vehicles, but who's to say that we're gonna have all the supplies that we need? We don't, we don't. I understand where you're coming from. But I just wanted to bring that up about 511. I don't, I don't feel comfortable with it. Um, and I don't think that you can ask us to go into that vehicle, even if it comes back. Rebecca, did you want to speak to? I completely am. In all the years I've said, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to say something about it. <clears throat> now, I'm just a fireman here, okay? So I'm not an EMT, but I 100% back that we need this taken care of. This can't be band aid anymore. We can't have our ladies and gentlemen go into a scene, coming back from a scene, losing power that's unacceptable. I mean, say it happens on a curb, you go off on a curb, then we got Antwerp situation all over again. I know that that involved another vehicle, but we don't need a tragedy like that here. Not one bit. Interest rates high right now, I get that. I heard your grumbling saying, oh, well, that's too much interest. I don't care. What is the price of our people? Then you need to get a seat here. Well, maybe <laughs> if you don't agree with it, it's time to leave. Okay. If you want because, to take my seat, I'll do it tonight. Because you know what? Yeah. All right. Millions of dollars of a person doesn't equate to but any. But you interest. don't understand. If you want a new car, do you have do you have money for a new car right now? You know what? Do you I, have money I, for I a do new not. car? 
I buy used, but I I don't I don't carry patients that need critical care. You carry your family, I your do, loved ones. But I take well care of my vehicles. Okay. <clears throat> We're taking care of this one. We're getting it, it fixed. I know, I know, but it has been mandated. The things that I mandated. just don't understand, and and people it, on the street they stop me, and and some are, some tell me they like what I said, some tell me I'm nuts. It don't make any difference. Uh, <clears throat> you can't spend money that you don't have. Well, you, you know what, you, you guys, you, we, 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 we have to have this service and we can do it with one squad. Farmer doesn't have a service, you don't have to have a service, but you're offering it so you should equip for the service. We, what you, you guys, people, I've been, I've been on fire and police committee for years. Um, we've talked about this for years. This isn't, this isn't new. We've talked about staffing back 14 years ago um, when I first got on. The change in how we have to run our departments and everything, I get that. I am for a new squad. Uh, we're working to get a new squad, but if we can help find some funding for that, I think we need to. Um, we've asked Cheryl to, to look at some numbers. We talked about going into our budget session. We don't have the money right now just to drop $300,000 on a squad. I get that. Well, We're looking nice to figure out. If we borrow the money, we don't have to drop $300,000 right, right now. We just have to make a monthly payment. Like, I don't understand why we're not taking action on this. Because right now, we've got over 300 runs. It's not even six months into the year. There's no snow on the ground right now. What happens when there's snow on the ground? The runs are going to go to two hours, two and a half hours. Absolutely. What's crazy to me is you have a police department that is fully staffed, correct? So yes. you have four full time covering three separate shifts for EMS. That is absurd. Go to any other EMS department, that's unheard of. That is unsafe. You you can't do that. If, if PD only had four people working, they wouldn't be able to function. So why are we struggling to function? Because you guys are, are not helping us. <clears throat> so are PFE and finance working on this to get us numbers? To get the you, of us you're that you're say, now you're people. saying that you don't have enough people. That was, that was brought up today. Did you hear that? Any of that? So, That's not new. Okay. Let Bruce talk real quick. So, I'm, uh, you guys know that I've been up here for the past six months saying the same thing over and over and over. And I thank you for, for the additional people. I was called today from Braun with that squad. It is still available at this time. He called me. I told him, I said that what we had talked about at PFE, um, that you guys wanted 511 to be fixed. I said I was going, we we're going to give one more shot, you know, just to, just to, to try, you know. And it, 511 it, being fixed was based on us also trading it in so that that decision was made like it was going to get fixed right, 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 either right, way right, right. and with the idea that we would bring i mean if we're going to spend three hundred thousand dollars that's got to come to full council i'm so, not right so <coughs> so the so you're looking at two hundred seventy thousand for this swap itself okay you've got you've got another roughly eight to ten thousand in in doing in putting in a radio system you know, to, to match up our radios. And then you've got another seven to 10 just to have it Hicksville. Okay, all right, so yeah, I, I am, we're, I, I estimated at 300, okay? Do I think that will hit that 300? Probably not. But I do know that the squad that we're looking at, we were able to take the the power load system out of 511 and put it into the new squad. That itself saves you over $45,000, okay? I've said this before, There, one of my wife's cousins works in Alexandria, Indiana. They ordered a new squad in 2023 they will not get it until 2027. And they paid $375,000 for it. These ambulances are not getting any cheaper whatsoever. And I, I they're, they're, they're just not. It's just like the fire, it's just like you're looking at probably a million dollar quint 
with a with with a grant, you know. And I get the the, the grants are a little different. Most places are renewing their or or turning over their squads ever once every three years. I'm not asking, not not nowhere, shape or form are we asking for an every three year. But for many, for for since I started back, we were told to try and save money. And and we we were trying. Okay. But I can save 100% of zero because that's what we had. We had no money. We had no money to save. In 2018, I gave the solution, and nobody wanted to hear it. The council did not want to hear the solution at all. What was that? Transfers? No. It involved. It involved the one thing that nobody wanted to raise the income tax by one percent. So you'd have two percent. Nobody wanted. That. <coughs> I sure don't. Yeah. But I also. But if that if that extra one percent means when I call nine one one, Mark shows up or Abby shows up. Trust me, the squad has been to my house several times. Once for me, and a couple times for my daughter. If that means calling 911, I get some of the best firemen that there are out there showing up to my house, then I'm all for it. <clears throat> But that, Bruce, I understand that, and, and everybody has a right to their opinion, and I, I, that was a way to generate additional money. Um, the fire and the EMS are not generated out of general fund, it's right. generated out of levy money. With it, we've had a, we're at six months of a new levy, uh, we're in a different situation, how we make runs, I so, get that. So we haven't had a full year of revenue, we've talked about changing some of how we, our run volume goes so, up, our... So can I ask a question, what year went, what year did we switch from the general fund EMS to the fire levies? I, or what time? I have no idea. Because, because I know, I know that when I, I know that you know EMS was funded out of the general fund at one time, and I also know that a former fire chief sat over there and asked us officers to bring the EMS back to the fire site, which the fire department was was fully funded by by the levies. So now we're taking this very small pot and trying to divide it amongst two very large organizations and, and Ron the other day he said it best you got two comp we Derek and I are in charge of the two companies the two entities in this entire village that doesn't generate enough that doesn't generate funds Any. exactly and it never has and it never <clears throat> will but we sure. need to have it well let me uh, let me say this about that and, and Cheryl wants to go home um, as Mr. Sanders said, I have sat here too long, but I'm going to cure that. But in all the years, <clears throat> one thing I've learned here, and uh, you can go back when once we started recording it and watch, uh, but nobody will. So, uh, anytime that anybody gets this idea that we need a new garbage truck, or we need a new fire truck, or we need a new ambulance. It just goes on and on and on and on until it happens. So what I think we ought to do is somebody tell Cheryl how to pay for it and get that guy that you're talking about that has that demo and get him over here and let's get her bought. Let's put this thing to bed. 4901 account. It's like put Eric her to said, bed. It's like Eric said, put our needs before our wants. While he's sitting there. That's my two cents. Get her done. 
possible. Well, I mean, we, yeah, we talk about this every every time we have a meeting. We talk about it. In the last eight to twelve months, I know Cheryl. I know she doesn't want to spend the money on general fund, but repeatedly said due to uh, projects coming up, we could set aside three hundred to five hundred thousand dollars a year for the next three three years to go towards the pool. That's the more I was thinking the money could come from to pay for an ambulance. So now you're going to have all the people up here crying at their little Johnny can't go out there and swim in that pool because you went and bought a truck. Well, sometimes needs and wants. I mean, but I will say, you guys come and ask for us to buy stuff. We look at the numbers. I mean, you can't yeah. just keep saying yes, yes, yes. Right, because right, no. I, I like to make the monthly payment. I'd rather make the monthly payment and pay a little bit of interest instead of coming up with $300,000 like this mm -hmm. or a million dollars. That's why I sent an email a week ago asking for all this stuff. So we'd hopefully make a decision making tonight. Right. But I like to have stuff ahead of me, not the day of asking to spend that kind of money. I like to be able to do my own research. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to vote on it tonight one way or the other because I want to look at more details. Let's get your details and let's plan on giving them a yes or no decision next meeting. Please. Or sooner. Yeah, or sooner. Yeah. But but get what you need. Before this squad. And I goal. respect what you're doing and I respect the, uh, how you study your numbers. Let's get the thing checked over. Chat with Cheryl, whatever you got to do. You chat with Cheryl, whatever you got to do. <coughs> You're doing the financing. That's where you she come up with the total cost of everything. Then she'd have to check with some banks to see what right, happened. Right. Yeah. Let's get it all done and be ready to say yes or no here shortly. And you'll need it on paper, right, Cheryl? You'll need something on paper to take to the banks. Or quote or proposal from. You can't just say three hundred thousand. You need paper. Need a bit number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say I got what we they, need. They, they, well, they've got. Yeah. That's it. Just cut and dry. We are not gonna talk about it anymore. We're gonna we're gonna get her done. Cheryl, also while you're at it, compiling numbers, could you also show us if we the money just sitting, what kind of money we're making on it, as opposed to what we'd be paying on interest on a loan. To pay yeah. cash for it. Yeah. Instead of finance, I mean, give us options. Be a money saving deal. Uh, that's a dangerous route to start. Then. Okay, then do we don't want to do that? Because I respect I what you said. I wouldn't recommend doing that. But you're okay with the buying it? Yeah. Okay, we got your vote. That's enough. That's adjourned. Well, unless they come back with it seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. No, 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 no. Don't be no. a scrooge. No, it's not gonna be a splash. No. No, I'm just saying. Yes, yes. yes, I'm okay with getting an ambulance. Okay. Yeah, let's, do let's do it. Let's do it. Thanks, Chief. Well, this is it. Like I said, it's an 08. I appreciate all the discussion, the topics, the comments. Um, we will have an answer to you here shortly. Done. Yes or no? Let's move to adjourn. Oh, wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. Fireworks. This meeting Court. will be July 1st. Is everyone okay with that? Because last year we had to not have a meeting that week. Yeah, that's. Yeah, we. July 1st. Well, yeah. Yeah. July 1st. I'll be here. 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 I'll be so well, adjourn July first. Um, no, Corey's got a quick announcement. No, I just reminded you that fireworks are June 29th. Yeah, it's dark. June 29th in the park. In the park. June, what time? Dark. 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 Okay. Thanks, Corey. Second. A second. Thank you, please. Yeah. Uh, is there a motion to leave? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.